imagine that you are a United States-based company that has come up with a new game-changing technology to change the nature of how we produce, consume, or use energy. You are making your pitch to potential investors and are asked the following question. Where are you going to manufacture your game-changing energy innovation? Are you going to manufacture it where it was developed, in the United States, or offshore, in China? In answering this question, you might wonder why your investors are asking about China. China has become the largest producer of manufactured goods in the world. In many sectors, such as automobiles, China is also the largest source of demand globally. As a result, China influences what technologies are profitable worldwide. Indeed, our results show that alone, production differences between the United States and China not just wages, but yield, downtimes, material quality, can be so different as to change what new product innovations it is profitable for firms to pursue. In the case of high-end optoelectronics and automobile bodies, if firms manufactured in the United States, the game-changing technology was also the cheapest to produce. However, manufacturing older generation products in China was the cheapest option globally. So, is manufacturing in China a wise decision for a small, innovative US company? The answer to this question is, it depends. Let's look at three energy-related technology innovations, optoelectronics, wind turbines, and electric vehicles. We found that for certain products at the technological frontier, like optoelectronics, the production process is not yet understood. As a result, designers need to be physically present to observe and experiment and successfully get products off the line. Because separating the designers from the production line can inhibit the designer's ability to innovate, offshoring to China can lead these small firms in the United States focusing on early stage technologies to be less innovative. So although you may think that they are making a wise decision to move overseas for production to reduce costs, this may be overlooking long-term benefits, such as gaining access to larger markets with game-changing products. Now let's talk about wind turbines in China. In the case of installed wind power capacity, China has greatly increased the number of wind turbines it has installed. In recent years, renewable energy has become a major focus of its government. This has led to being not only a major manufacturer of wind turbines, but also a major user as well. One way to assess whether China has been innovating in the wind space is to look at patenting activity. And indeed, there has been an immense growth in domestic patents. However, China's wind firms are not patenting outside of China, as illustrated by the data from the European Patenting Office and the US Patent Office. While this is happening in the wind case, China does, however, aggressively patent in other major export markets. However, there are several other important aspects concerning wind industry in China. While wind power installed capacity has already surpassed the United States, the same is not true concerning electricity generation from wind. In terms of generation, China still lags behind the United States. This is because an important portion of wind turbines are not yet connected to the grid, and so they are installed but not producing electricity. While the United States has about 80 vehicles per 100 people, China has only about six. Yet China is already the world's largest consumer and producer of automobiles, and it's growing fast. So the trends in China's market and the strategies of automakers and government in China have the potential to affect automotive technology development worldwide. In one recent study, we measured Chinese and American automobile preferences. We found that, on average, American car buyers are only willing to purchase a pure electric vehicle if it costs ten to $20,000 less than an otherwise equivalent gasoline vehicle. In contrast, Chinese car buyers consider pure electric vehicles comparable to gasoline vehicles if they have sufficient range. They're willing to adopt today's pure electric and most plug-in hybrid electric vehicles at similar rates relative to their respective gasoline counterparts. So, the choice of where to produce a technology can depend not only on regional production economics, 
but also on the characteristics of regional markets. So, how do you respond to your investors who want to know if you plan to manufacture in the US or China? Don't take a one-size-fits-all approach. If your game-changing technology is one where designers cannot be separated from the manufacturing process, you may be more innovative manufacturing in the United States. However, if your technology takes advantages of differences in production or consumer preferences in China, you may be more innovative manufacturing there, or if you can afford it, in both.